Hathaway, the seven footer from Greensboro to jump it for North Carolina against Isaiah Victor. Forte back to Coda. Coda had 10 assists in each of the two wins in Birmingham. Veteran from Brooklyn, New York. Lang to Forte. Coda inside to Haywood. So they're able to get it inside to the big man who makes an early statement. Did it against Stanford against the Giants. Collins twins and Matson, and he should have a very easy time against Tennessee who has nobody that can match up with them one on one and the turnover Tony Harris has passed off the hands of Victor and we're going to see this all night watch the seal and the pass over the top Yarborough even though he gets there not effective against Haywood who's leading the nation in field goal percentage at about 72 percent full court press used by Tennessee but Jason Capel able to bring it in rather handily. Hawked by Victor defensively, lying outside. Forte with Higgins. Capel and Victor and back into Haywood for another easy two. And Carolina getting two very easy goals from their seven foot center. And if I'm Jerry Green, I'm thinking zone right now because if they're going to depend on a one on one, they're not going to be able to stop Brendan Haywood. They're going to have to go to a zone or a matchup zone as Higgins knocks it down from outside. Well, he hasn't made a lot of points, but he's made some critical threes in the tournament. It's four to three as Tennessee on the board on Higgins' tray. The Forte is going to have to make Higgins respond on the defense and fatigue him a little bit. There's Haywood over the top. Lang gets the garbage and Chris Lang at 6'10 hammers it down. 6-3 Carolina. Chris Lang another key factor for Carolina really had he had a pretty good consistent season since his freshman year. He's got to go in and help out on the inside. Coda on Higgins and Coda comes up with a steal. Usually brings it in deliberately. There was no advantage. Haywood outside, and then they'll move him underneath. Swinging around and try to find Haywood again inside. It always comes back to the strong side. There he is. CJ Black giving away about five inches against Haywood. Forte with a screen from Haywood, and the freshman Forte makes it 8 3 Carolina. Well, they make Tony Harris a liability on defense because if he can utilize his quickness on the perimeter, they are taking him down inside. Forte can definitely shoot over both guards for Tennessee. And that's Yarbrough well off the mark with his three point attempt. Coda with a rebound. Coda with 4.3 rebounds a game at guard. And Yarbrough for Tennessee, the most versatile player, I don't really think gets enough look at the basket as Capel misses. And Higgins the other way to Harris. Forte on Harris. A hanger, not there, and Haywood with a rebound. The clear to Coda. Well, both, Number's not there. Both Coda and Forte put the size on Harris and make it tough for him to shoot over the top. Haywood into the lane. No foul. Victor gets the ball for Tennessee. Well, if you can force Brendan Haywood to put the ball on the floor, you've done a great job. He doesn't handle it well when he has to put it on the basketball floor. And Isaiah Victor from outside with a three. So Victor, who has been quiet for the balls, a 6'9 junior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky makes it 8 6. Been a little disappointed for Jerry Green over the regular season. Not as effective as he's liked him to be. Doesn't play as physical as he needs to. A great time to redeem himself. Into Lang, and Lang blocked by Victor. Here comes Harris. Sets up for the three. And the rebound, Forte. He'll fire from three point range and connect. It's 11 to 6. Carolina, 5 for Forte. Under control. I've never seen a, a freshman as poised and patient. Even, even Michael Jordan, as a freshman, wasn't as poised and patient. It wasn't as, as natural as Forte. Seems like he's been around for a while already. 11 to 6. North Carolina leading Tennessee early. Four minutes and change. Have been played into CJ Black trying to get around Haywood. He can't block by Haywood, and out of bounds to Tennessee. And with it, a timeout. It's put in play 11 6 Carolina. 
two coaches that know each other very well. When Jerry Green was a coach at UNC Asheville, spent a lot of time at Carolina Basketball School where all the coaches got together. And well, that's a nice move by Higgins behind the screen to pick off his second tray and pull Tennessee within two. So John Higgins has his average already six points. Forte from 15 down the bottom of the well for the rookie. He has seven. Tell you what, he is a smooth, quiet freshman that plays like a senior. Look at this, Ron Slay just into the game, the freshman for University of Tennessee. He's not afraid to shoot it. He'll bring energy to the volunteer game. Forte again. Three in a row for Joseph Forte. The freshman from Greenbelt, Maryland, went to DeMantha High School, played for the legendary Morgan Wooten. Average 16 on the season to lead Carolina the first freshman ever in North Carolina history to lead the team in scoring. It reminds me of Michael Jordan a little bit Michael you know Michael talked a little bit more he was a little bit more verbal but not on the floor very focused very sure I think Forte is a step ahead of Jordan though as far as the development stage is concerned as a freshman. Yarbrough rejected Harris reclaims. Yarbrough inside the line. Haywood bats it over to Coda. Carolina by six. Nearly six minutes have been played. Well, they're going inside to Peppers, who's also a pretty consistent inside player. Carolina will beat the ball inside until you counter that. Right now they're trying to do it with Haywood and Peppers. Coda penetrating and picks up the first foul of the game. And it goes against Tony Harris. His First, obviously, as Julius Peppers has replaced Chris Lang. Lang back at the scorer's table. Uh, Bill Guthridge used only seven players total in the two games in Birmingham, and Peppers gave him some big time minutes. Uh, defensive end, freshman football star for the North Carolina team. Coda has his first point. Lang returns, and it'll be Brendan Haywood that gets a breather. Two football players. On that Carolina roster, one has been hurt since October. That's Ronald Curry, who's quarterback. Carolina, a guard that Coach Guthrie really misses as far as the quickness is concerned at the perimeter. 16 to 9. Higgins, he's feeling it. Eight points for John Higgins. Terrific start for the man from Shaker Heights, Ohio. You have to switch on Higgins because he's so good at coming off of picks down screens and, and back picks. There's Forte and he's on fire. He's hit four in a row. 11 points for Joseph Forte, the 6'4 freshman. Five for six shooting. Lang with a block at the other end. Forte coming up big again for North Carolina. He and Lang, the stoppers of Harris. And Harris a little bit out of control. And he can hurt Tennessee when he does not look to pass the basketball. A lot of people think that at the point guard position, he looks to shoot the ball a little bit too much. That's why Higgins is such a, a, a good balance with Harris in the ball game. Carolina goes into a zone. Slay. Yarbrough back to Slay. Over line. Blocked by Peppers. Dr. Peppers. Well, he threw a little salt net room. Forte to the baseline to Lang. Forte up to grab the rebound away from Yarbrough and another chance for Carolina. Seven minutes have been played. North Carolina by seven. Forte finally misses and the foul on Peppers underneath. First on Julius Peppers. Well, Julius Peppers, a great leaper himself, pouring a little salt in the wound of Ron Slay. Get it out of here. He's been an excellent addition as a walk on football player for Coach Guthridge. Had six sacks and 50 tackles as an All-America freshman player at Carolina in the fall. Didn't start practicing till Thanksgiving after the season was over and now playing a big role in the tournament bid for this story program inside to Slay. He's blocked by Peppers. That's two for him. Back comes Hathaway. Nice tip. Hathaway patiently and he's blocked again by Peppers but that will be his second foul. Well, the defense is tenacious inside for North Carolina. Julius Peppers leading the way, only 6'7, 270, but boy, can he get off the floor for a player his size. They're going to give that last foul to Chris Lang. He and Peppers both hammering at Charles Hathaway. 
It was recruited by former Tennessee coach Kevin O'Neill, now the head man at Northwestern, halfway 6'10 in Nashville. He played football too with that body, you can imagine. <laughs> A punter. <laughs> You look at that size of that, and you say a punter. That looked like a punter to me. Uh, looks like a, he looks like an offensive line, one one side of it. <laughs> Terrence Newby, number 21, who's seen limited duty in the tournament play, in for North Carolina. He replaces uh, Coda, and that's the first breather for Ed Coda in the entire tournament. Well, Newby's not a, not a great ball handler. That's why you see Jason Capel handle the basketball well. Newby will turn it over, but we'll give you some offense. Peppers, the left-hander, not there. Harris Walker just in for Tennessee, and he's hardly true to the surname. He's a flyer. Behind the back to Slay as Yarbrough with a little extra sets up his teammate Yarbrough's first points. 18-15, North Carolina's lead. Well, Cut to three. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Jerry Green has Vincent Yarbrough play the point because of his size and the ability to get in and pass on the interior. As you can see over the defense, it's pretty good. Capel into the lane to score his first basket, and it's 20 to 15, North Carolina. Capel's had to play a lot of power for it when Chris Lane went down with injuries. Did an excellent job in shutting down Jacobson at Stanford, so he's Taking on the name as a defensive stopper for North Carolina. Battle for the rebound and it's last touch by Charles Hathaway of Tennessee. Here comes Brendan Haywood back in and CJ Black will answer for Tennessee. Timeout, North Carolina by five. Dick, what I really think is going to boil down to in these two games, Tennessee is, is a very athletic team, and I think Carolina is going to have trouble if Tennessee gets into any type of transition game and create an up tempo. Coda's the only player that can play for taking play it. Here in Austin, the steal by Harris Walker of Tennessee with North Carolina leading 20 to 15. Yarbrough saves it for Harris. And Yarbrough collects the rebound inside. Haywood can't block, and Vincent Yarbrough has his second point. You see, there's the quickness that that the Tennessee possesses. They got this full court trap. Coda's the only ball handler, and then they capitalize with the quickness. Forte tripped as he made his drive, and the foul on Tennessee's Yarbrough, number one. Carolina, the bigger team, depending on the high percentage shooting to keep Tennessee from the fast break. Tennessee, the more athletic team, wants to get the ball up because they know that only Coda is quick enough to really stay with anybody on Tennessee's team. Forte, and a great athlete, really doesn't possess the quickness to keep up with the guards for the Volunteers. Double screen outside for Forte, but Tennessee read it well. And they're not even playing Chris Lang outside. Forte, long range, not close. Harris with a rebound. Here comes the little guard for Tennessee. Long pass to Ron Slay. And he delivers. It's 20 to 19. Slay with four off the bench. And, and Slay is the player that, that, that really scares Carolina because he's a he's a shot maker. He's a player. He's emotional. He's not afraid to play against anyone. Coda brings it all away and can't score. Gets his own rebound with the left hand, unable to make the score. Slay, he wants to go all the way. Beware. He is guilty of traveling a bit too much for Ron Slay. There's a break. There's Ron Slay getting out. And look at the ability to change directions. And here he is, Slay riding again off of the rebound. Anytime you got a big guy that can get the ball off the board, jingle bells to the hole. <laughs> Slay bells, but no ring that time. 20 to 19, Carolina's lead by one. They enjoyed a seven point advantage early in this game. We're at the midpoint of this opening half. Haywood, good fake, but got the ball down where Tennessee could strip it. You force Haywood to put it on the floor. As I said, you've done a great job defensively. Doesn't handle it well. Moving inside is C.J. Black and drawing the foul. And a chance now for 
Tennessee to take its first lead of the game as Haywood has foul number one. And that's going to be a problem for Haywood because C.J. Black is active. He doesn't wait for a double team. He catch and goes and puts Haywood on the defense. Also Slay, a player where he just saw get the ball off the rebound and take it the entire length of the floor. Those are the assets that they possess as, as big players. Black ties it at 20. A senior from Chattanooga. First 21 games, eight a game, then moved it up over 11. Rebounds up one a game. Field goal percentage to markedly improved. And so he turned it on at the end of his senior season. And Tennessee, for the first time, is in front with 942 left in this first half. The ball's by one. This is a 10 2 run for Tennessee. We'll see a little half court trap now. They've shown Carolina the four court trap. Now they go to the little half court trap with the quickness on the perimeter. Max Owens in for North Carolina. Lang trying to get it to Haywood. And he uh, apparently stepped or moved his uh, pivot foot and the turnover to Tennessee. And to me, Chris Lang game, even though he's had some injuries and some illness, his game has taken a back, you know, back seat. He's the one that needs to loosen up inside. He caught the ball two feet from the basket. You don't make an interior pass when you're that big inside. 21 20 Tennessee in the lead nine minutes ten seconds left before halftime. See there's a battle in the post they want to get Brennan Haywood in trouble CJ Black is active enough to do it. Ten on the shot clock into Isaiah Victor for the fall away and it's 23 20 and a whistle foul on CJ Black basket is good. And Victor coming alive at the right time had a disappointing season. Look at the fall away. You got to be strong to sh be bumped and fade away and hit all nothing but net. And you see Haywood and Black underneath battling it out. Each team with three team fouls. First on Black. Down by three, North Carolina. Max Owens into the game for the first time for the Tar Heels. Into Haywood. And he's triple teamed. And they knock it away. The athletic Tennessee defense now much tougher. Long pass to Yarbrough, no, to Isaiah Victor, and he staggers out of bounds. It'll be North Carolina's ball. Where Haywood's going to have to look for a cutter, a little touch pass, because they're sending three players to him immediately. And the only thing he's looking to do is beat the triple team. He's got to keep the ball up, look for an outside shot to Cape Wakota. They need to knock it down from out there. Max Owens for three and that's big for Owens who's been used sparingly he ties it at 23 with his first points. He's another junior player that when Lang was out had to play a little power for it. He's back at his natural position right now loves to shoot the perimeter shot shot running baseline to baseline. Walker feeds Yarbrough and Yarbrough puts Tennessee back in front 25 23 he has four. I really believe that Yarbrough handles the ball more. If they look for his shots, he's a guy that can make things happen for other players because he's so good off the dribble and creating his own shot, causing the defense to collapse. Capel, Lang, and it gets it back, rejected. Walker to Higgins. And C.J. Black from outside, and the senior hits the three, and Tennessee enjoys its biggest lead at 28-23. And Brandon Haywood likes to go inside where Black can't control him. Black goes outside and pulls Brandon out where he cannot defend on the perimeter. Capel for three. And North Carolina cold, and Haywood will pick up the foul, leaning in his second. And North Carolina needs to find somebody to help out with the scoring other than Forte and Haywood. The rest of the uh, heels pretty quiet. Well Tennessee you know they're very quick and that's something that Coach Gutters has had a problem with defense on the perimeter and matching up with the quickness. And Forte doing a good job now they're going to call a foul on him he thought he had ball but Harris was quick enough to get it away and get Forte to wrap around his arm his first and for Carolina their fifth team foul Tennessee with only three. Yeah, had he had two hands on it he would have gotten a call. 
With 645 left in the half Tennessee taking control here after North Carolina led 18 to 11 it's been the volunteers on a run Victor nice underneath pass. a black high low and Tennessee enjoys its biggest lead of the game at 730 to 23 after Carolina led by seven earlier in this first half. Well the threat of the shot released the defense someone took their eyes off of black Lang did and he was underneath. Lang with that jump hook and it softly nestles in four points for Chris Lang 30 25 Tennessee another player that could take advantage with his height and sight with the jump hooks but it's a little soft with late. he's got to find that that aggressiveness once again Victor gets Julius Peppers in the air Peppers can't collect the rebound Harris inside to take over and Owens with a steal North Carolina. Forte hot earlier made four in a row. Walker defending him. Owens trying to create and then made the bad pass deflected by Black intercepted by Victor Harris to Victor and Coda able to strip it but a foul on Ed Coda. Well, North Carolina's defense a little stagnant right now. Owens made some great moves but didn't have anywhere to go with the basketball resulting in a turnover and Tennessee is getting out on makes misses and turnovers and making something happen in the transition. Isaiah Victor at 6 9 and quick on quick averaging just under 10 a game on the season has five tonight. And Vincent Yarbrough the sensational Tennessee sophomore from Cleveland Tennessee replaces C.J. Black. Isaiah Victor at the line. He's had some big games. He's also had some skids, and he's had too many for Jerry Green, but he's a player that can rise to the occasion and have big games. Forte helping out Cote on the backcourt. And there's the turnover caught in midair, and Victor all the way for Tennessee. Eight points for Isaiah Victor to lead the Vols, and it's an eight-point advantage for Tennessee. And, and Coda is, is shaken up. There's no one else on the Carolina team that can handle the basketball. So when they take it out of Coda's hands, forces other players to handle the basketball. That the pressure is, is, is intense, and Carolina's turning the ball over. So here's a situation where Forte he leaves his feet. Now that's the worst thing you can do is leave your feet with nowhere to pass the ball. Jason Capel comes in for North Carolina and Tony Harris from behind Coda strips it and it's Victor the other way and then Forte with a steal off to Coda beautiful pass by Forte three points for Coda 33 27 Tennessee's lead and even though Coda beat the press the quickness of Tony Harris to retrieve and knock the ball out of his hands Forte though however quick to the ball and a nice no look pass to Coda. Tennessee executing well picking their spots Yarbrough at one point CJ Black they've even used Hathaway inside Higgins for another three it rattles out but Hathaway with the rebound it won't go Lang and Hathaway battle and it's out of bounds off Hathaway's knee Hathaway exerting himself I haven't seen him play with this much aggressiveness all year long but realizing this is a or do or die. He's really been active inside, knowing that he has to compete with Lang and Haywood. Here in Austin, Tulsa's already earned the right to play the winner of this one in the Elite Eight on Sunday. Approaching the four minute mark, Coda takes it inside. Good move by the senior Coda. It's 33 29. And a steal by Coda, but a foul at the other end with 4.01 remaining in the first half. North Carolina led by eight then Tennessee rallied and they led by eight but the Tar Heels of Bill Guthridge have rallied and pulled within four the foul on Julius Peppers his second. Well I think Julius forgot which sport he was playing that time that was a legitimate defensive end move but Coda as we mentioned at the top of the show must look to score now he's a guy that breaks the press and sometimes when he has the defense behind him 
hits. He has to look to attack. Ron Slay hits, and for the fastest coverage online and a complete look at the starting lineups of the remaining tournament teams, click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. Five points for this talented freshman, Ron Slay from Nashville. Jerry Green has players like Slay and, 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 and C.J. Black. I mean, they're really not specialists. They can do a lot of good things. They're just junkyard dogs. They just play the game and take what you give them, not afraid to play against anybody. And that's the kind of attitude you want to bring to championship basketball. Forte, Slay comes out to greet him. Forte off balance, but falling left, drops it in for his 13th point. He celebrated his 19th birthday yesterday. And uh, having a big game tonight. Keeps Carolina close. 35 31. Three and a half to go in the first half. Long range Tony Harris. He was hit by Forte. No whistle. Coda to the other end. Forte to Hathaway. And a travel call against. Uh, against uh, Haywood, rather, Brendan Haywood staggering, turns it over. The eighth Carolina turnover, a four point Tennessee lead. 316 left in the first half. Tennessee ball. If Tennessee can keep the heat on Carolina's guards with that four court pressure, they could really create a problem because Code is the only one. Forte tries to handle somewhat, does a pretty good job, but the guards, Tennessee, very quick. Inside it goes to Slay. This quick jump over the much taller Brendan Haywood. And Slay with eight and a six point lead for Tennessee. The Slay's a shot maker and the ability to jump quicker than Haywood. Haywood gets frozen. Slay over the top. Forte badgered by Higgins. Capel in the lane. Go to a 10. And runs into a stone wall and Higgins Harris was there as well and the foul will go against Tony Harris his second it's not the foul you want to make with seven seconds left on the shot clock Coda had nowhere to go forced him wide only the fourth team foul on Tennessee so North Carolina not close to getting to the line Tar Heels have committed seven look at black hold up Haywood underneath and take away his position. Look how far they're pushing Haywood out now. He can't do anything from there. Between Slay and Black, they're doing a good job. Forte with 20 seconds. Haywood has to come outside, and Coda will set it up. Goes for the three. Haywood. And the foul. Might have been Slay reaching in on Haywood. His first. Well, Haywood and Black are really battling. Look at Look, look at this over here. Now that's that's what you call kiss and make up there down in the paint. Then they slide him over here to Slay, and Slay pushes him out way out here. Now he can't do anything from there. He has to go back out. Now that's the combination defense by Tennessee. Forte way over the mark on his three-point try. And Harris to the other end with less than two to go in the half. Slay. And a foul, a hold as he made his quick move. He's got the speed of a small man, but the size at 6'8 to power as well. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say, Dick. He, he can't be matched up against. You, you can put him on a guard, a forward, but no one can defend him because of what you just said. The ability to outquick people off the dribble, and he can also shoot over Haywood, which we've seen already, and he can knock the outside shot down. A very versatile player for Jerry Green. So Julius Peppers with his third foul, so he's got a seat next to Bill Guthridge. And he's a good free throw shooter as well. In fact, the best on this Tennessee team, just under 79% for the season. Now with nine points and a perfect three for three from the line tonight. Played in that tough SEC conference where there were at least six at one point seven teams ranked in the top 25. So Tennessee comes from a lot of tough preparation down in there. Southeastern Conference. Higgins in for Harris for Tennessee with 150 left and the balls now enjoying a eight point lead. And look at the trap. They're forcing it one way or the other, putting the size on Coda in Yarbrough, taking away the vision. He's got to look to shoot the basketball. Coda's got to look to shoot. 
surprised by the pass in North Carolina very fortunate to come up with the ball as Slay touched it last as Forte not looking for the pass from Coda. And Coda I mean Tennessee knows that Ed Coda doesn't want to shoot the ball and even if he's not shooting well he must take the shots that are available to him because the opportunities are there. Now they set up the out of bounds play but the officials doing a little uh, mop up work perspiration on the court. Haywood at the start of the game had those two quick easy baskets and he's been shut out since so Tennessee made a terrific defensive adjustment. Well they tried to play him straight up now black does a good job of taking away the position but it didn't work over the top. Now they're fighting for inbounds position black the defensive player always gets the, uh, the first choice of where he wants to be. To Haywood. And he misses. See, that's not his shot. They're forcing Haywood into shots he doesn't want to take now. Harris Walker on the fly. Partially deflected by Haywood, but Slay everywhere. Can't hit the short jumper. Walker steals it. Three pointer. And Higgins just missed. Here comes Forte. The number's not there. Capel uh, run into. <laughs> By C.J. Black. That was uh, looked like one of the deep passes uh, in the football field where that defender goes up. Like a, like a football play and then ended up with the chokehold. Second foul on C.J. Black to the line for North Carolina. Jason Capel. And he has been uh, the quiet man. You called him the X factor in Birmingham, and uh, he's almost been the zero factor here, the O factor, two points. Yeah, he hadn't done anything on the offensive end. He did a good job against Stanford defensively, but they need Capel on offense as well. Carolina only one for two from the line, while Tennessee nine for ten. Coming up on Penzoil at the half, Greg Gumble and Clark Kellogg will update you on that Oklahoma State Seton Hall game. All the tournament news all coming up on Penzoil at the half. Boy, that Clark Kellogg's good. Every sentence has meat in it. I mean, even six, seven words really says something every time Gumble calls on him. My idol, Clark Kellogg. I remember they used to throw that pass to him off the backboard in Indiana. It used to wear me out. 107 left in the half. Tennessee by six. Carolina matching up with a little matchup zone. Not really a man to man switching up areas. Now they go to a full man to man and kind of threw Tennessee off. They had to back it out and, and refocus. Nine on the clock into Hathaway. Can't go to over Haywood. And a three second violation halfway. A bit uncertain about his move. And so North Carolina with 35.7 seconds, just a less than a second difference between the shot clock and game clock. And Brendan Haywood's not going to go for any pump fake, so there's no use of giving him one. You got to do what Ron Slay did back him down and go right over the top because he's expecting the pump fake. Carolina trying to set up a good final shot here at the end of the first half. Cut into the Tennessee lead. Down to 10. With the denial, it coded. It couldn't get it to him. Forced to take that shot, but big three. Big time three for Capel. And that is the end of the first half. North Carolina and Tennessee, a three point game at the half. And, uh, Free throws the difference for Tennessee and James Worthy. Uh, you know, whether you're rooting for North Carolina, rooting for Tennessee, there was hope in that first half for either side. It's the kind of game where it is uh, going to be an exciting second 20 minutes. Absolutely. Tennessee has a quicker team. They can wear down the Tar Heels, and the Tar Heels started out with their inside game. However, Tennessee came back with some tough defense. They had to get some shots from outside for Forte to stay in this ball game. Speaking of outside shots the top score for Tennessee shut out in the first half. Coda had five so you figure that Harris is going to get his points and his team nevertheless is still up by three. Tennessee starts it. Victor Harris Black Yarbrough and Higgins for Tennessee. It goes to Victor blocked by Lang. Victor takes it right back. And the rebound, Haywood. Haywood, Lang, Forte, Coda, and Capel. 
Capel misses the drive and Black takes it away. Well, Carolina wants to run. They'd like to get it up the court, but they don't want to get into a tempo fast game with Tennessee. There's Victor, who has emerged as a, as a player in the first half with five, excuse me, eight points. Bad pass, though, on Capel with a steal for North Carolina. Capel with that big three point shot at the end of the first half to move Carolina within three. The lob pass to Haywood, and he's fouled by Victor. Well, see, that's the way North Carolina started the game. They were getting it over the top, but then Tennessee started to collapse. This time they could not get there quick enough. You're going to see the help come from there, but it doesn't get there in time. Victor from behind. First foul on Isaiah Victor sends Brendan Haywood, the seven footer from Greensboro, to the line, this 20 year old junior. Well, how about Haywood? Do, do you, uh, you do it again? <laughs> He's had some uh, bad games and uh, criticized by the Carolina fans, but he has had a good tournament thus far. Misses both free throws, and Tennessee stays on top by three. One thing about Brendan Haywood, the way C.J. Black and, and Slay will play him, they can wear him down with the physical play. They really like to compete with that. Harris seeking that first point of the game, well off on that three-point attempt. Inside to Haywood, they back out to Capel. They collapse very well, and no one for North Carolina is ready to shoot the ball coming out. Good defense by Tennessee on Haywood. They're getting it in close, but Haywood unable to put it down. Victor to Black, and the foul. Haywood late getting down court defensively. And the foul is on Ed Cota reaching in his second. Well, the straight post up for Haywood is going to be difficult, difficult because Black and Slay and Victor and those guys are great leapers. He's going to have to receive a pick maybe, come from the weak side to the ball off of a pick because right now he's not getting the low position that he's accustomed to. Cornelius Germain Black, CJ with his eighth point, perfect three for three from the line. Aiming for another double figure game, the senior. And it's 41 36, the first points of the second half scored by Black of Tennessee. There's that pressure that gave North Carolina trouble and forced other players to handle the basketball. Capel can dribble, but he can't initiate the offense like Ed Cota can, and that's a problem. Now they're going to try to straight post Haywood again. That's all they've looked to do, and uh, Tennessee's done a good job of collapsing. Inside to Haywood and he scores and he's fouled. A little different play that time they had. Haywood on the strong side. They dribbled it on the other side. He was able to get over there and get the position. But that time they had Haywood moving and he was able to get the low position. They whistled Isaiah Victor for his second foul. That's the first basket for Haywood since the first minute of the game when he scored two quick goals. Capel on the follow and pulled down by Victor of Tennessee. 41 38 the Vowels as they head to the other end. Haywood missing three free throws here in the second half. There's Black inside. Watch a little footwork. Left hand. Beautifully done by the senior Black. He has 11 points to lead Tennessee. And that's some beautiful little jump hook. He's not afraid of Haywood. Good bump and shoot move by CJ Black. Ed Coda, Ed Coda's inability to get inside because of the quickness. Now there's one, but he forced his shot and was blocked. Higgins with the block and brings it back to Yarbrough. And Black, the trailer, makes it 45 38, 13 for CJ Black. And you put Chris Lang and Brendan Haywood in a transition game, their shot blocking abilities not that effective. And the foul inside is on C.J. Black, his third. C.J. Black, look at the bump. He First he bumps and turns to the baseline with the left, and then in the transition game, Brendan Haywood not getting back to protect Black right down the middle. With three fouls, C.J. Black goes out, and Charles Hathaway, 6'10", returns to the Tennessee lineup. Three minutes gone, second half. Hathaway not a big on the offensive end, but he has three offensive boards and also competing with Haywood inside.
Got to try to get Chris Lang involved. He's the other guy that can loosen things up for Tate. Been pretty quiet. They're playing inside. Oh, right on kill. Good coaching there, James Worley. 45 40 the score. Three and a half minutes gone in the second half. Chris Lang, another player, once he gets position, hard to stop. They need to go to him and go away from Haywood so much. Victor matching his 6 10 against Lang 6 10 on the block by Brendan Haywood. Coda will wait for numbers. See if they go back to the bread and butter inside Lang with the jump hook. He can knock it down if he gets it on that block. Watch out for the jump hooks. And just a little too strong, but Haywood uh, had it for a moment. Victor pulls it away. Tennis Tennessee must continue the tempo game. If they allow Carolina to get into this half court, posting up, slowing down the tempo, Carolina will rest during that time and that will give them some energy. Yarbrough over Capel and the foul will be on Carolina's Jason Capel. His first foul, first. I got Ron Slay giving me the eye from the Check in table over there. He's saying, Look, I'm coming in with a little beef. He showed me the elbow. <laughs> I love guys who talk to you doing a game. It, I mean, Ron Slay, he, he has that playground mentality, but it's, it's structure. Look at it. He's giving me the look. Look at it. He wants me to, he wants me to draw him up on the telestrate. I'm going to put that smile on there in a second. 46 40, and here comes Slay. Jerry Green, his coach, says he's never seen a freshman with. Such exuberance and enthusiasm and charisma and he just loves to take on the opponent. He'll take on the entire arena. He loves to stir things up. And Michael Jordan was like that for us at Carolina. He was always yakety yak yak yak. But you know what? He could back it up. Well, Yarbrough hits them both. It's 47 40 Tennessee leads with four minutes gone in the second half. Well, there's the battering ram for the University of Tennessee, Ron Slay. He's a big Charles Barkley at six feet eight inches. He's fast, he's strong, and he's uh, in double figures again after scoring 15 and eight in the two wins in Birmingham. Four and a half minutes into the second half, the University of Tennessee with a seven point lead against North Carolina, the winner to meet Tulsa in Sunday's regional in the South. And they're in this defense now. It's a little little half court zone kind of trapping pressure the ball. This is what was affecting that. They see they forced that pass by making it look like it was there. It was an illusion. Slay getting back for the pass. Tennessee with a seven point lead on their star. Tony Harris with the ball has not scored a point. And a foul away from the ball as Hathaway and Lang were battling and Lang ticketed with number two. Well there's no reason really to, to really pressure Hathaway. If he gets the ball he's not a great shot maker so you don't want to waste a foul on, on the post up defense on him. Three team fouls on both Tennessee and North Carolina. Tennessee never had won two NCAA tournament games in their history until this year. Well, I don't know what that was, but it worked out for Tennessee as Yarbrough blocked by Haywood right back out to Harris. Carolina cannot get the loose ball. They must pick up the loose ball. Second opportunities. And Harris midair trying to feed left handed and threw it out of bounds. Well, Harris looks to shoot so much when he goes in there and he gives it up just a second late that pass was available before he tried to give it once he saw that the shot wasn't there it's too late to try to make a pass inside give it up Forte with 13 points to lead to all scores in the first half Lang free from 18 and drills it Chris Lang from outside he has eight Carolina must look to him. He's much more offensive minded than he and he's shown in the NCAA tournament. One of the reasons for Carolina's criticism is the fact that Chris Lang has not really had the season. He's been injured though. Tony Harris uh, holding his wrist after he made that pass in the last exchange that went out of bounds to Hathaway he came away holding his wrist and uh, Harris Walker the talented freshman from Chattanooga will replace him. 0 for 6 from the field is uh, Tony Harris averaging almost 15 a game the Vols top score but shut out tonight. See that's where Slate likes to operate right in that area 
And a reach in foul. And Slay points back at Hathaway as if to say, yep, that's the man doing it. Hathaway indeed has his third foul. Slay is a type of player that you, you don't want to play against, but, but you want him on your team. He's an emotional guy. He can score against anybody, not afraid to play, and can really mix it up when he gets the ball eight feet in. There. Hathaway, nice pass to Yarbrough. Good setup by Big Charles Hathaway, and the balls are back on top by seven. Can't go to sleep when you're in the zone. You got to protect the areas. That time, Tennessee and finding the back door pay. And a foul in the lane against Hathaway of Tennessee. Look at Metalock Lemon there with the <laughs> no look pass. He's excited. Big Charles, a 6'10, 250 from Nashville, Tennessee. Forte's been very quiet. Higg has done a good job on here in the second half. He's not had one good look. And another foul inside, and it's against North Carolina. Ron Slay says, I'm making it happen. And that's what he does. You know, he, he aggravates you. He, he, he fouls you first, and, and then the referee catches the second foul. Chris Lang unable to get the position. A little flop, but he did throw the right arm in there. And that's what Slay does. He just kind of irritates you. Third foul on Chris Lang. I see you, big boy. He's got a dent in there. He hits that <laughs> just so often with his index finger. Not modest either, is he? Seven-point Tennessee lead. But he can uh, talk the talk as he's walking it, isn't he? He can back it up, and that's the difference. Yarbrough lost the handle. Good move by Forte to extricate. Got to give it up. Oh, he wanted to go for the three, but he felt pressure from behind, and here comes Slay! And Forte cutting him off, and you can see how fast at 6'8 he is. Well, he covers ground, and he can handle the basketball. When you can rebound and start to break, get out in front of the defense, and then Bypass Forte and allow him to foul you. That's a versatile to big quick guy. Forte with a second foul, and he's going to be taken out by Bill Guthridge. Max Owens is in. Talk about a guy that knows how to work PR for himself, too. He's looked over here four or five times and said, I'm the man, and there he is. Boy, he is he, the man, Dick. He has been outstanding this freshman with 12. Man. And it's the biggest lead of the game for the Tennessee Vols. Nine point advantage. 13 to go. Carolina not able to find their scores. Brendan Haywood shut down. Forte shut down all in the second half. And uh, Hathaway goes down in a collision with Brendan Haywood. And the fouls on Hathaway is second. Slay such a shot, make a nice pass, though, and look at the bank off the glass. The ATM card is working for Slay. Yeah, that was a little slicer off the backboard. Not much glass to work with. Slay above his average tonight. Carolina desperate for a basket, and Haywood blows the slam. No one there. There's a case of hanging on the rim before you really got the shot going. There's nothing wrong with gathering yourself. If you're not sure you can make the dunk, bring it back down and go right back up with it. Those shots are, are, are too difficult to give up. Hathaway becoming the playmaker. Slay. And uh, he has to call timeout as he's double teamed. It comes with 12, 19 left in the second half. Carolina can't miss too many opportunities. Tennessee. Enjoy a nine point advantage. Coach Bill Self joining me now. Coach, a uh, little advantage here if you play the early game because you get a chance for a real time evaluation of the opponent. What are you seeing so far? I see a lot of tall guys. Uh, we're not very big, and, and of course, Carolina's huge, and we play Tennessee, and, and, and they're not only big, but they're quick. But uh, obviously, two very good teams. It'll be very difficult for our guys to match up with them from a size standpoint. We'll have to make it a speed game. All right, you may be interested in this. Just an update on uh, Tony Harris's wrist situation. It's actually a re-injury that happened in the preseason tournament in Puerto Rico. Ironically, guys, that injury happened against Tulsa. Higgins unable to hit from outside. Thanks, Spencer. And, of course, uh, Coach Self uh, understating things. They did play Tennessee and beat Tennessee by 20 points in December. Showing much respect. Doesn't want to have any quotes that could go up on the 
the team bulletin board prior to your game. Hathaway and Haywood battling inside. Clock down to 13. Was a great lob by Cable. That was a beautiful pass and the foul. So Haywood with a throw down. Carolina's working the ball from side to side. They're making the defense adjust, and that will loosen Haywood up. As you see, he gets this position here. There's no defense back there. Good hesitation. Little chop chop with the feet, but nevertheless, got the bucket. Harris Walker with his first foul is halfway out, and CJ Black returns to the Tennessee lineup. You see the career high 28 against Missouri and then 12 against Stanford in that big upset knocking out the number one seed here in the south a three point play by Brendan Haywood cuts the balls lead to a half dozen. Forte 13 but no points in the second half and this man Ron Slay has been a force hard to believe if you didn't know he was a freshman he plays like a upperclassman a lot of great freshmen in, in college basketball all these days in all conferences but Slay I would have to say the most emotional leader as a freshman he's also looks like he's been around for a while eleven and a half minutes to play. Tennessee enjoying a six point lead led by as much as nine Carolina had a seven point lead in the first half. It's their Carol biggest Carolina forced to go to a zone and Tennessee so good at finding Slay and black in the interior. Yarbrough's miss and it's last touch by Slay who got position on Brendan Haywood. Here comes Tony Harris back in. He is yet to score bothered by that wrist and Higgins. Takes a breather for the balls. And see, to me, if Tony Harris is not scoring, then he may be better, you know, coming off the bench if he's such a great streaky shooter because he's not distributing the ball. And Walker, Higgins work well together. Forte just not getting many open opportunities in the second half. Higgins and Walker together have done a great job. There's the jump hook by Haywood, not him, but there's Peppers. With the left. Oh, what a tough move by the football star. Bullying his way inside to collect two, and that pulls Carolina to within four. Oh, here we go. Julius Peppers. Nobody wants to get in front of him and take that hit. 270. North Carolina stays in the zone defense. Yarbrough for three. Oh, that's a big one for the Tennessee fans. 11 points now for Vincent Yarbrough. And he will run the baseline, baseline to baseline, and sooner or later he's going to catch a perimeter player out of rotation. Nice pass to Haywood back out to Capel. Tar Heels aren't ready to take advantage of it. They're sending three guys at Haywood. When, they, when he passes back out, you have to be in a scoring position. Yarbrough doing a good job on Capel. Goes up with a shot, misses everything, and Ron Slay has the rebound, and Peppers, oh, he was traveling before he could call time. When, you, when he pulled it away for Peppers, Peppers is so strong, when he released, he almost sent Slay out of the building. <laughs> Here it is. He wants to start that break. Peppers ties him up, but before he could get the timeout, there was a little contact there. Could have been a foul. Could have been the fourth on Peppers. A break for North Carolina at the 9.47 mark of the second half, trailing by seven. And see Haywood. See, Black is really getting in Haywood's face. Now, Haywood is known to kind of run and hide when he's challenged by these type of players. Black is not afraid. He's bullying and bumping Haywood, and Haywood is, you know, he needs to compete with it instead of walking away from it because C.J. Black and Slay are going nowhere. Over the top. A great pass. He's lucky it fell. He missed the dunk again, but it danced off the rim. Yardbrough is a player for Tennessee that... Ooh, Harris slashing inside and draws the foul. See Haywood a little bit more active. You see him start on one side and then seal over the top. Harris went for the steal as opposed to holding position. Nine and a half to go, and Haywood has just picked up his fourth personal foul, and Bill Guthridge as yet has not made any move to his bench. 
That's the first point of the game for the Volunteers leading scorer T Tony Harris who is averaging on the season 14 point nine He's a good free throw shooter about three out of every four. The big question for coach Gutridge is where does he go to replace Haywood I mean he has Orlando Melendez over there he's a pretty active forward Max Lawrence is six five but he has no one to replace that center position no, Peppers out with fouls no, Haywood stays in the game with four. Forte. Coda will try the three. And Slay, what good position. That's his sixth rebound. Carolina not getting any perimeter shooting. They, they need to get Forte back involved in the ball game. There's a shot that's a good one for Yarbrough, but he draws nothing. Good move by Forte out of a scramble to come up with a loose ball. They need to isolate Forte. He's a guy that can create off the dribble. They're going to collapse on Haywood, and Forte's a guy that can get it done for Carolina. And he does. 55 51 the score. Eight and a half to play. Got to get the ball in his hands. He was hot in the first half. He could take advantage of Harris with the height. Back comes Slay from long range and down to Haywood. So Forte, who had 13 to lead all scores in the first half, has his first points of the second half. And that's not the shot you want with Brendan Haywood with four fouls. And there's Chris Lang starting to assert himself. Another key player for Carolina inside. Great assist from Coda. And all the way goes Walker, and he gets it back. I actually thought that was goaltending. And a two shot foul coming up. Haywood, I hope. He's gone. And that's all for Haywood. Should have got, got him out. Should have got him out before then, I believe. Well, Julius Peppers was about to go in, but before he could uh, enter the game, Haywood on that second chance by Tennessee, a quicker under the basket of the loose ball. Should have never committed that last foul. He should have known not to be anywhere near the basketball. I'm surprised that Slate took that outside shot, knowing that he was still in the game with four fouls, but now. The question is, who can step up? Will it be Chris Lang? And see, there's a reach-in foul of all fouls. You never want to do that if you have four. Give up the two points and save yourself. That's eight minutes that they will not have Brendan Haywood. At the 8.03 mark, he's out. 11 points and five rebounds for the seven-footer for North Carolina. And Harris Walker at the line has another Tennessee free throw. Outscoring uh, the Tar Heels by 11 from the line. You can always tell well. the most aggressive teams when you look at that step. Tennessee very active on both ends. Now they smell the fact that Haywood's out, and they're going to take it to Carolina on the defensive end. Coda saw the opening, and Black makes the block. Carolina wanted a foul, no whistle. 7:55 to go. 57. 53 Tennessee leading North Carolina with a winner to meet Tulsa Sunday in the regional final here in the South Brendan Haywood the big seven foot center for North Carolina fouling out scored 11 rebounded five and in the paint Tennessee has actually outscored North Carolina by two in the game and without Haywood one wonders if they won't try to jam it inside and take advantage of uh, the lack of height. Although Chris Lang is 6'10 and Peppers, although 6'7, certainly with his body, plays taller. I got to tell you, Ron Slay and, and, and CJ Black, you know, really didn't have any intimidation against Brendan Haywood, but right now with him out of the game, they are licking their chops to get the ball inside against the Tar Heel. Forte setting up Coda, and the whistle as he goes inside. And that will be the seventh team foul on Tennessee and send Coda to the line. Fourth foul on C.J. Black. Well, they must continue to explore Tennessee's foul trouble. Maybe get Black out of the game, kind of even things out a little bit. But Lang is the player that must step up for Carolina. He's the only inside post-up player right now with the jump hooks. So he's the guy that must become the score down low. Well, that hurts. He misses the front end of a one-and-one one Dakota. It remains a four-point game. Tennessee doing a much better job letting Walker and Higgins handle the ball more. They're better distributors, and they initiate the offense a little better than Harris, I believe. 
Walker, no look pass to Black. Well done. Harris Walker, the freshman with a perfect assist. Black has 15. And you watch, I bet you Black's a lot smarter playing with four fouls. He won't commit the fifth foul with the reach in. They're playing inside. Now they have to explore that with Black having four fouls. Let's go inside the lane and try to get that foul. Well, it's out of range, but Pepper's there to follow it in, and Julius Pepper's with four. And if he's going to draw that fifth foul, he's got to do more than just turn and shoot. He's got to put it down, back down, and try to make Harris play him laterally. Peppers is playing with four fouls himself. Victor can go right make over that the three. Top. And missing everything, it becomes a pass, and Harris sends it back out. New clock, six and a half minutes to play. Tennessee by four. Check that without touching room. It isn't a new clock, and it's down to seven seconds. Doesn't matter because a foul against North Carolina. Now Tennessee knows that they can go inside. They're posting up Victor in black, and soon Slay will be in the ball game posting up. There's no Brendan Haywood, no leapers other than Julius Pepper. So Tennessee feels very confident that they can go inside the remainder of this ball game. Victor hits the free throw. He has nine points. It was the foul on Coda, his third, and back comes Slay. And C.J. Black with four fouls is arrested by Tennessee coach Jerry Green. Peppers rebounds the miss. Five-point game. Still plenty of time. A lot of time left. Coda and Forte. You can't. Over force it inside. Lang's going to give you something, but you got to look to other players. Forte, Peppers, Coda. And uh, Capel trying to jam his way in there, and I believe he picked up the foul. No, so it's going to be Peppers, and now he has four. Well, it's Peppers' nature to play physical. He knows no other way. So when he was around the ball, he's going to be physical. And he picks up some fouls like that. I don't think Coach Gutch was expected to play. Peppers the way he has this year and uh, Tennessee already having a huge advantage in free throws now presented with two shots on each ensuing Carolina foul as the Tar Heels have committed 10 and Victor hits another Yarbrough returns Walker does a good job he gives good minutes to a jury green he's very quick and as a freshman protects the ball very well does a good job and will be a future floor general for Jerry Green Jerry Green has a very athletic team as well and one thing that he does is he you know he doesn't coach a lot he just kind of lets him he lets him play he throws a few concepts out there and lets this team go at him. look at the defense of switching Harris and Harris too much with the body and uh, that will uh, send North Carolina to the line. Here in Austin, Texas, the South Regional of the winner to meet Tulsa on Sunday for a trip to the Indianapolis Final Four in North Carolina after leading early in this game by as much as seven as seen Tennessee take the lead before the half and uh, hang on to it here in the second half, out shooting. North Carolina at the free throw line. Tennessee has made 19 for 22 free throws. North Carolina only five of 10. And you saw the shot of Brendan Haywood, the seven foot starting center for the Tar Heels. He went out with his fifth foul at the eight minute mark. And so North Carolina's inside game uh, reduced with his absence. Well, it's reduced from the high percentage shots to the OK hook shots. Of Chris Lang, who can knock him down, but I really believe that it's it's guard time for for North Carolina now. Capels, Forte, and Coda have to make something happen. Higgins from three-point range, and the rebound by Capel. Five-point game, five and a half to play, and timeout is called by Bill Guthridge, the North Carolina coach. Five minutes, 37 seconds left in the second half. And uh, have out rebounded the Tar Heels by eight. And yet it's only a five point game in North Carolina with a ball. And the shocker is the fact that Tennessee has out rebounded North Carolina. But just as the first game with Tulsa, the more athletic team that moves a lot, they're in position to get some boards. Carolina not getting to the free throw line. Lang inside, not close. 
He's got to be stronger than that with the basketball. The little flip push jumpers aren't enough. You got to drop step and power move. Ron Slay, the freshman with the ball now, again has been the inspiration of this Tennessee team, rallying them from a deficit in the first half. Victor. Tony Harris, he's been quiet, although the leading scorer for the balls on the season. Well, they're going to find Slay. They'll pass that ball around a little bit, then they'll find a cutter, a back door. Oh, a prior that doesn't fall. And back comes Tennessee with the ball after Higgins miss and a foul. Back to the line go the Vols, and they're getting two shots on each Carolina foul. And for Coda, that would be his fourth. And as a player, you start to read the body language. You look at Tennessee, and they're all active in the game. You look at Tennessee's bench, they're pretty active. Look at the Carolina players. They're tired. A little fatigue is setting in. And then you look at that North Carolina bench. Everyone over there is a little bit concerned right now because they don't feel the momentum that they felt in the first half when they were playing well. Yarbrough adds to that mounting total of free throws for Tennessee. He's three for three, has a dozen points in the game. Lang out, and the muscular Peppers replaces him. Well, they need to create some shots. And Max Owens, a creator, he can forte capable. He's putting in guys now that are quicker and can create off the dribble because Carolina needs some attempts at the basket. 21 for 24 from the free throw line for the Tennessee Volunteers, and they're back up by seven. Tennessee in a man to man. North Carolina must start to take off the dribble. Cobas, Coda is the player that can do that. Harris shuts him off. Forte kicks the three. A big one for the freshman star for Carolina. He has 20 to lead all scores. Back to a four point game, and Tennessee brings it in with four and change remaining. Carolina goes to their number one defense, which is the zone, but you got to watch out for Yarbrough running the baseline. Also, Slay inside. Loves to pop inside for his little eight footers. Under four minutes to play. Yarbrough. And it's taken away. The defensive peppers force the air. And Jason Cable came up with a loose ball. Carolina down by four. Got to find Forte. He's the guy. Got to find him. Cable inside over Slay. Scores. It's 64 62, Tennessee. Coach Gutch is really excited with the defense. And timeout, Tennessee and the Carolina fans are on their feet. Bill Guthridge, North Carolina 0 and 11 this season when opponents attempt more free throws. And they're certainly, uh, that's going to be the case in the game tonight. Very important now for North Carolina to match the athleticism of Slay. And he traveled trying to make his move toward the baseline. Carolina gets the ball. Tennessee's lead. North Carolina with seven more field goals than Tennessee, but the Volunteers with their inside game drawing fouls. If they win it, it'll be their free throw shooting. A chance to tie. Coda, the all-time assist leader in North Carolina history with the ball. That's the assist they want, the two-pointer, and Coda ties it at 64. Less than three to go. Tony Harris of Tennessee has quick feet. He can stay in front of you, but Coda and Forte have the ability to shoot over Harris once they get inside that lane. Jerry Green shouts the play out to Harris. Harris circles underneath. Outside Black. Higgins has got a good three-point shot. Harris draws Forte. Black and the muscular peppers. Seven on the clock. Higgins to Harris with five. Harris drives, can't hit it. The battle and out of bounds off at Coda. And well, a new clock. Well, that's what the Tar Heroes are complaining about is that the shot clock ran out while the ball was loose there. And they're, they're saying that it didn't hit the rim at all. I don't think it did. It didn't hit the rim, and the, and the ball was still in play when the shot clock was at zero. The ball did go out on North Carolina, and the referees are going to have to get together. Here it is, with about three point. seconds left. There's the shot. Yeah, I don't and, see it. Uh, and there's the loose ball. Well, we don't see the clock yet, but there's the air ball. Now, the shot clock is at about three right there. Two. 
You can see it uh, does not touch the rim. One, and, and then it runs out before it goes out of bounds. Now that should be North Carolina's ball on the shot clock violation. If they're able to see it as we did, and they can, this is a correctable error, and they can check it out on the video replay. This is similar to the UCLA Stanford game at the end of the season in overtime. And it's such a it's such an important game that they have to get this play right now. There's the shot clock at two, still in play. Now it does go out on a Carolina player. Now right there it's at zero, and it hadn't gone out of bounds yet. Let's see now. Right there they said it may have hit the rim. No, but no, angle, it no. did not. It shook the nets a little bit. So that's the question. And they aren't looking at a monitor. What they're doing is they're having a discussion with both coaches. It was the long range shot that showed at best that the ball wound up being short of the basket from some angles. It looks as if it might have clipped the iron. And even in that, going back to that UCLA Stanford game, which they corrected at game's end, it just did nick the iron. And here's the shot that I believe reveals the fact the ball comes up short. Touches the net, but not the rim. And they changed the call. North Carolina ball. 224. Left. 64 64. North Carolina on a 9 2 run in the last three and a half minutes. And North Carolina has a smaller lineup now. They should be able to combat the pressure of Tennessee. They have some ball handlers capable if they could just spread it out and let someone bring it up the floor. Watch out for Slade. He's got some tricky hands. Capel 6'8, so is Slay. Here's the player I think has the best scoring opportunities with his penetration and his little push jump shots in the paint. Coda scores! The veteran from Brooklyn has given North Carolina the lead 66 64, less than two to go. He wants to play again, and he does not want it to be intramural softball when he gets back to campus. He wants to come back and play on Sunday, and he's showing the aggressiveness from the point guard position, which he had to do for North Carolina. Tulsa awaits the winner in the Elite Eight Sunday. One and a half minutes left. They have to get it to Slay. He's the shot maker. Harris for three. Not there. Peppers up high for the rebound. The defensive end in football for North Carolina. Coda with the ball. 120 to go. It's Ed Coda's show from here on out. He's going to dictate what he wants to or either get it to Forte. 20 seconds on the shot clock. 110 on the game clock. Got to get it to Coda if you can. Cable sees the opening. Peppers backs off with 10. Forte with seven. We're in the final minute. Oh, he's going up. He's going up for the three. And he can't hit it. Peppers does it. Oh, it does. No, no, no basket. It's ruled a shot violation. Peppers didn't get it off in time. And that could be a critical call. My, oh, my, was that close. Watch the clock. Two seconds. Peppers. Oh, that's good. The basket should have been allowed. That's good. It was out of his hand before the seconds ticked to zero. Tough break for North Carolina. It cost Carolina two points they had earned. What presence of mind of Peppers to know that he had to get that ball out of his hands. Here's Slay trying to tie it. Misses the shot. Rebound Forte, and he's pulled down by Slay. And that seemed to be a little too much. Forte not at all happy as he comes up limping as Slay took him down. They were looking for the flagrant foul. Bill Guthridge battling on the bench. This veteran coach who sat next to the legendary Dean Smith for so many years since his days in Kansas lost his mother two days ago. Ninety six year old mother passed away has a funeral on Monday. They said he was so emotional after his team beat number one seed Stanford that he broke into tears in the locker room and Birmingham Alabama battling against criticism all season long because his team lost more games than any North Carolina team in a half century but he's got his team battling and this is the other side of Bill Guthridge as Forte with two shots big free throws down the stretch and coach Guthridge he knows he can coach I played under coach Guthridge he's a very knowledgeable basketball coach had some injuries had a slow start maybe over scheduled a little bit but make no mistakes. 
14 to the coach. with his 21st and 22nd points to give North Carolina a four-point lead. I don't want y'all bro on the three. He's going to be looking for it as soon as he touches it. Slay for three. Rattles out. Pippers pulls down the rebound and Higgins with a reach-in foul. A remarkable comeback in the final five minutes by North Carolina. They have shut out Tennessee. The last six minutes and 45 seconds, the volunteers have not made a field goal. And that's with this man, the seven-footer, Brendan Haywood, on the bench. And in a way, without their seven-footer, Carolina has played tougher and more effective basketball. Well, Coach Gutchers has found something new here in the last two minutes, particularly with Haywood out of the game, and that's a lineup that works with the small players. They don't have Chris Lang in the ball game. Julius Peppers, the walk-on football player, I cannot tell you what addition he has made. Ed Coda doing what he's supposed to do, and that's be a little bit more aggressive in scoring. Peppers knocks down the first of two. Peppers hits the free throw. It's a five point game. Bill Guthridge, his team was picked to win the ACC. They were ranked in the uh, top three in the preseason polls. They finished nine and seven in the conference, won only 18 games, 13 losses. And Carolina fans aren't used to that. And he's had to take a lot of heat. They were calling for his job throughout the country, but his team has rallied in his behalf. Back at the Irwin Center, University of Texas in Austin, North Carolina, two timeouts. Tennessee won both at the 10 fall mark. Tennessee with just under 13 minutes left in the second half, led by nine, 51 42. And then late in the game, just as Stanford went into a drought in the round two in Birmingham, so has it been for Tennessee. They've not scored a point in four minutes and 48 seconds, the Volunteers. Way outside is Higgins. He misses the three. And uh, Capel running into his own man, Forte, travels, and Tennessee will get it back with 16 seconds left. Well, if North Carolina does not give up any quick threes and turn it over, they've done themselves a big favor. 6.45 without a field goal and five minutes without a point. Way downtown is Harris, and he hits the three, and that takes Tennessee within another three of a tie, and they've got 13 seconds. You can't chalk up a Tar Heel victory yet. No way. Duke knocked off earlier by Florida, and so the ACC banner being carried by the Tar Heels of North Carolina certainly underdogs coming into this tournament as the number eight seed. Big victories against Missouri where many thought Missouri would beat them then the number one seed Stanford a big win for North Carolina and Birmingham and down by nine they've rallied here and with just eleven and a half seconds left Bill Guthridge's team sends Coda to the line he needs to make one of the two to force a double uh, possession for Tennessee. Looking for his 10th point. He's made some crucial plays in this final five minutes. Ooh, there it is, a four point lead, 71 67. That one beat the drum a little bit. Got all the rim. He used every inch of the rim there. Seventy-two, sixty-seven. And a disheartened Tony Harris just flips the ball back. He'll hurry and he'll fire. No four point plays. Short, followed in by CJ Black. There's no timeouts left. And the long pass to Max Owens. Frosting for North Carolina. 1.6 seconds left, and North Carolina moves on to the final eight. And a remarkable comeback here in Austin, Texas, down by nine. Bill Guthridge's Tar Heels without their seven-foot starting center in the final eight minutes. They find a way, led by the senior Ed Coda and the freshman Joseph Forte. They defeat the University of Tennessee 74-69.